Welcome everyone, this is William here and today I'm just going to show you guys, well not really show you, uh, I'm going to pull you guys through uh, the process of my uh, Cinema 4D logo After Effects uh, in HitFilm of course. Uh, in case anyone is wondering, this is not a tutorial, this is just a, not really a time lapse, this is just a uh, video where I'm showing the process between no effects and the final result of my product. So let's start by going to hit film, obviously. Um, I hope you guys don't mind me doing uh, any uh, uh, any commentary because, uh, well, I don't really like quiet videos and having music in the background makes it really unprofessional so let's start with what <laughs> with my uh, product um, it is an Im image sequence so I'm starting with selecting my render folder first which is here and it creates a sequence of pictures into a video and the pictures are all rendered with a alpha layer so behind this logo there is literally only air so it looks pretty good but i'm not satisfied of course uh, i was tempted to uh, create more so let's start adding a play in really dark ray placing it under the logo adding a light Yes, I want a camera. This also needs to be pretty 3D plane. And wow, you're really off center. Um, there you go. Um, let's continue with making the render invisible so that so that I don't have any struggles with doing it. Um, what I want the light to do is, I want it practically really low, like on super slightly, yes, this is perfect, okay, now I'm going to grab the intensity, giving it a smoothness, Somewhere here, I want it to be pretty bright, just about 80%, which sounds nice. And the animation is really short, so I'm going to grab a frame, not from this. Uh, school, animation, and render. Grabbing the last frame, and I'm going to put it about here. Let's see, where's, where does the animation end? I'm doing this so that my video will practically render somewhat faster. And here's the end already, which does not really make a difference. But yeah, that's the last frame. Okay. Now, um, and I'm going to put another key here, and I'm going to let it fade out. move and about here I want it also to disappear nice. just about here and it just end here well a little bit earlier and this a bit earlier Perfect. Okay, in animation, I want it to take about five seconds. So, you know what? I'm going to make it somewhat longer. This is just about perfect. Okay, five seconds. I'm going to show the, the uh, composite shot length. Well, render length, I should say. Um, 
I'm missing a drop shadow right here. So let's start giving my render a drop shadow by going back in time. And sh drop shadow. Of course, it's absolutely invisible. So I'm going to put some distance. Okay, that's way too much. Um, I want 210 degree, so it will go to the bottom left. And I want the shadow distance to gain distance about here. Oh, that's way too much hit film. Not so much, okay. And the shadow it has a really hard um, sharp. Oh my god, my English today. Um, I don't care. Let's go to 65 pixels penumbra. There you go, soft shadow. Um, it already gives a slight realistic look. So what I'm going to, oh, of course. There you go, but this needs to be on 41 already, so that you won't notice any difference. And now I'm going to render it, uh, well, about uh, 45, and I want the target bitrate of 30. Uh, I want the work area, 5 seconds, comp side shot 1, and I want to export it into a time-lapse folder oh just time-lapse save oh. uh, pre-render render okay Well, that went quick. Um, okay, we have the pre-render, render, and let's continue with another composite shot. Now, composite shot two. This is going to be. Uh, let's call this um, the RGB split. No, no, no. Wait, chromatic. Ever. Reason something like that? I don't. I don't really know. Well, in layman's term, this is like splitting the red channel and green channel and the blue channel from each other. So, time lapse and pre-render render, and put it here. And I'm going to duplicate these two, three of them, and I'm going to rename them to. Oh, to a color channel RGB and let's go to histo levels histogram. This is going to be red, obviously. Wait, green output white zero, blue zero, green. And the U2 blue. Red output zero, blue output zero, green, uh, blue, blue. I like to have really subtle details in my videos. They're almost invisible to the average viewer. But I really like uh, having small details and really satisfy me. It gives. It also gives a tiny bit of immersion for the people who don't know. Um, so let's reattract these three and make them blend through each other with screen. There you go. Perfect. And I'm going to be in need of some shifting here. Um, how about 
zoom blur. This is always something that really helps. And there you already have it. You can see the slight, ever so slight difference between all these. So let's put the strength on uh, somewhat higher, like eight. And I want it to start about here. Uh, strength and I want it to practically disappear or disappear in here there you go normal logo let's pre-render that shit in slow motion Give it a few frames. And done. All right, let's take a quick peek. It looks pretty nice, if you ask me. All right, um, I'm going to once again render this. Uh, Composite shots, chromatic aberration. Content area, export. And then I'm going to call this pre-render. Not pre-render render, just pre-render. And if anyone is wondering why I am rendering multiple files of the same animation, it's because I am trying to lighten the workload on my laptop. I know it could handle a lot, but what I'm going to do in the next stage of this uh, is adding motion blur. The detail is extremely subtle, but it requires some heavy, heavy, extremely lot of CPU power. And G no, no, not really GPU, mostly G CPU power. Um, well, in other words, horsepower. <laughs> um, it's uh, that's the reason why I'm doing that. If I added motion blur in this stage, my laptop will probably explode. Well, not really explode. Um, more like freezing so much that hit film will crash and. The recorded file will practically get corrupted and I'll sit here like a dumbass. And in my mind is like, why did I do this? I, I've lost so much work now. But hey, um, it's also for render efficiency. This, uh, it's for more render speed. All right, pre-render and let's at this and call this final final after effects oh i'm really sorry if if you if you're <laughs> at the moment like oh my god this guy has crappy commentary it's uh well i'm not really a guy it's professional in doing commentaries and stuff all right here is the profession our professional uh logo rendered with chromatic aberration and background and light and drop shadow so i'm going to add the last layer of effects um here we go great layer which is going to be shortened severely to like five seconds and here we go let's add motion blur here it comes and hit film throws already Okay, that's better. I'm pretty sure there's going to be artifacts all over the place with this. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. Um, let's um, make it somewhat more uh, dur dur 
Let's clean up the motion blur. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, more artifacts. This is perfect. Um, reverse a few frames. Thank you. In slow motion. Yeah, this is going extremely slow. I need a frame where I can see the artifacts really, really well. Which is about here, I guess. If, e yeah, okay. Um, let's turn off the comp settings and go to custom. And it's practically has fixed himself. Wow. That is amazing. That truly is amazing that it fixed himself without even requiring any extra work on these settings. Yeah, the animation is going too fast for that. Is there any more artifacts that's going to show soon? If it Wait, which frame are we? Oh, let's go to second one and a half. Whoa, a bit too fast. Yeah, I can see the artif artifacts again. Maybe, oh, I forgot the meanings of these. Uh, I think this is more for precision. Uh, I practically forgot, I'll, I'll figure out at some point in my life. Yeah, no, let's uh, put that at 0 0.5. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Um, let's take a look at that plus there. Practically no artifacts. They they are really just a tiny bit visible that you won't really notice until you like. Oh my God! What the hell are these? So let's continue and disable motion blur because that is really crapping my performance on this device. And let's add lens dirt, which is really not beautiful at the moment it's not really showing and I want motion blur to be at the uh, no I'll do that later um, yeah I'm going to need some better precision on this uh, how about less threshold and less intensity No, maybe more and less. Oh, oh. Okay, I, I pretty much got the result I did. I got before. Um, let's put that down for a moment and blur it all over the place. Hmm. I want it not really to be visible in the beginning, so I'm going to put the intensity somewhat higher around here. I want it to be smooth. And I want it to disappear. Grab another keyframe and let's put it about here. 0 0.06, so it's perfect. Smooth. And yeah, this could start uh, way earlier. A mm, little bit more intense. Just tiny. Tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, this is uh, this is okay. 
No, maybe not. Okay. There you go. Very slight detail there. Something you almost don't really notice unless, well, you really do notice, but the f uh, it fades away. Something most people don't notice, including some of my teachers. I'm not even joking. Now let's add some diffuse, but I want it to be really almost invisible. That is not invisible. Uh, radius. Let's see. Um, about eight. And I want it to. What I also want is a glow. Because gives some sexy shit right there. And wait, just about here. I wanted it to become more intense. Just zero point three at first, and let's put it around here. Let's move it out. Give it some more glow. Oh, okay, that's too much. About one point one. And when it comes to a still, I want it to fade away to 0 0.4. It's really super ultimately slight, teeny, mini detail. It's invisible, but it gives some extra smoothness, just a little bit. This could be also somewhat more smooth. No? Okay, how about that? Hmm. This is going really fast. And this could be... Uh, what the heck? How about that? Okay, uh, this seems about this seems just about what I want. Okay, um, let's add the motion blur, and it will crap out, of course, and it's done. All right, let's render and show the result. X no fine off the effects export as render wait uh, after effects there you go and there you have it guys um, there is the before and the after effects a result of my 3d animation um, I hope you guys enjoyed the tiny tiny um, well video about me doing some edits on my work uh, I just wanted to do this just to show you guys the real magic behind the scenes um, of course this is on a really low level because on my racing videos that I did before it's not really visible in the time lapses because it's going so fast but my but there are lots of details going in there and it takes a lot of time to edit some of these videos I mean for about three minutes or two minutes of video footage with cool music in the background it takes me about like five to eight hours just for that and uh, well it's 
it's pretty logical because there's a lot of effects going on there but it shows how long it practically takes for something to look good and um, less amateuristic <laughs> well I uh, not to say that my videos look professional or anything but some people tell me that it is really easy to make videos and then I tell them just go ahead and start up After Effects and do something comparable on what I do in HitFilm I mean sure I could use After Effects I could just do about the same but then they'll most people will realize how hard it is to edit some videos on some extent you know um, but yeah it was just the point of this video on what it takes to, for five seconds we just did it did this in about like 20 minutes I guess or 10 minutes because I did this before but yesterday it took me about two or three hours to uh, get the same result as this one because I was experimenting with stuff um, but uh, yeah that was mostly the point of the video showing you how time stealing this is for people like me who has a um, school uh, well subject it is really difficult to do uh, because well 3D animation also isn't the simplest. I mean, I did four hours for three seconds because, well, my first time. But it also showed me how difficult it is to do some 3D animation. And it gives me more insight on some stuff uh, I wanted to do later just because I wanted to do some, uh, maybe to do some Spyro animations later on maybe giving some fan fictions life uh, by giving it 3d animation but that is some plans like in a really far future and what i'm maybe planning to do is another uh, racing video it will be maybe around this week uh, but i am pretty busy with homework right here um and yeah i have not really nothing anything pardon me to say more um so it's time for me to end the video right here thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah have a nice day